In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, I want to talk a little bit about how you might be playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and not getting the most out of it. You might be playing in a way that isn't quite as fun. I see a lot of comments online about people playing the game and they're like, I just don't get it. I don't know why people are enjoying this game. Uh, all you're doing is running all over the place, back and forth between quests. It's huge distances. The fast travel sucks, etc. And in this video, I kind of want to address that and kind of explain to you why you might not be doing that right. So I have about 200 hours now on my first playthrough of this game on one save. And I can tell you that Dragon's Dogma 2 is not about questing. It is not an open world game where you do a quest, go pick up another quest, go do that quest, go pick up another quest, and go do that quest. It does not play well like that. I get that there are a lot of people coming from other open world games and that is your gut instinct is to just tick off all the quests. But exploration is king in Dragon's Dogma 2 and the meat of the game, the real beauty of Dragon's Dogma 2 is its exploration. Having played as much as I've played at this point, I can tell you that I am still finding things in this game that I did not know were there. There is so much to find and explore, and it's likely that a lot of people, you know, just hobby horsed the main quest line and went straight into endgame and missed so many things that they didn't realize that they could do. And it's really, really unfortunate because there is just so many good things to find in this game. And it probably took me a good 50 to 70 hours before I realized how much was actually packed in here. And that's when I like really started going back and exploring everything. And when I say explore everything in this game too, I'm not talking about like, oh, there's a quest marker on my map or there's a marker on my map, I should go explore that. I'm talking about explore every single house you see. Explore anything that looks remotely out of place. There is stuff everywhere and it's like right under your nose most of the time and you just didn't see it because you weren't standing at the right angle when the lighting was at the right point of day. Maybe it was dark and you walked right by it. It was two feet away from you, etc. There are just so many things to do and see in this game that I urge you to do that. If you are someone who just keeps going like, the questing sucks, I don't want to keep running back and forth. Don't do the quests for a while. Go explore. Just like pretend like there aren't quests and go play that way and see how you enjoy Dragon's Dog. And the thing is, the way the quests work in this game, and the fact that they're easy to mess up or get wrong or have an incorrect conclusion, or maybe the outcome isn't what you want, really makes it so that even though it's not a game that I think a lot of people will play a second time, because if you thoroughly explore the whole game, it will take you easily over 100 hours, I do think that there is an opportunity there for people to come back and like maybe not mess up quests, or maybe get quests they didn't even know that were quests the first time, because the questing in this game isn't exactly straightforward. Like sometimes quests appear and I'm like, how do you have that quest? I didn't have that quest. And that's the sort of experience you have with Dragon's Dogma. So I think there is a opportunity for people to replay this in that sense as well. And another tip that I, I really want to give people in terms of exploration that was a huge game changer for me um, that I just can't seem to not play with now is that if you're playing a mage, a sorcerer, or a warfarer and you have you know, a sorcerer's staff or a mage staff equipped, using levitate can get you so many places in this game that you would never be able to get. It will take you to places on the map that you didn't think you could go. There's the way the game is designed, like you can go very, very high vertically in this game. And I think a lot of people are expecting the game to limit how you can go and where you can go. And it does a really good job of giving you the freedom to just go wherever you can possibly see most of the time. Like 99% of the time, if you can see it, you can pretty much get to it if you can figure out how to get there. And once you start using Levitate to get you like places you're, you're thinking, am I, am I supposed to be here? Is this a place that I, I should be allowed to go? And you start realizing that yes, every place was thought of like that and you are supposed to go there and there's stuff there, you will enjoy the game even more immensely. Chances are, if you're not playing a mage sorcerer or you haven't used a warfare with one of those weapons that you didn't even know that this was a thing. Like, you probably missed out on so much exploration. So I would argue, if you're far into the game and, you know, you like a play style, like you like playing an archer, a magic archer, a fighter, a warrior, whatever, but you want to get that exploration, go to warfare, stick with the same play style, and just switch to a staff when you want to, like, float over across something because it really, really makes the exploration of the game 
incredible, and it's really hard to play without it once you have it. And there are a couple other things that really help your gameplay experience in this game that are just quality of life, in my opinion. Firstly, once you gain the trickster vocation, I highly recommend leveling that up a ways and getting some augments. Firstly, it's detection. This will change your game. Once you start finding Seeker's tokens and like you start hearing the noise and you start finding them everywhere, it really makes the game more fun, in my opinion. You get really good loot from the Seeker's tokens collecting them. And it also kind of leads you in the direction of caves and things like that. For instance, like you'll hear a sound, but you'd be like, I can't see th something obviously. So you'll know that it's either up above you or below you a lot of times. And that kind of pushes you to explore even further. And also, if you get Fugicity, this reduces the chance of you being ambushed while you're taking an ox cart or while you're camping. The camping one, you don't get ambushed that much, but the ox cart one is like one out of every two times by default feels like. At least that's how often it is for me. And that can really annoy you if you need to go back and forth via ox cart a lot and you know you're going to be attacked and if your cart gets destroyed, you're running even more. I slot this on and leave it on like everywhere I go. Even though it sucks in combat, it doesn't do anything for me there. It just makes the game easier to you know get about and makes exploration more fun. And also make sure you set up your port crystals so that they're in good locations. I highly recommend putting one in Sacred Arbor. I have one through the checkpoint gate next to the ox cart thing there, so I can just, you know, either go straight down to Bok Batal or I can go through and hop the ox cart to go back to Vernworth. That's a good spot for one. There are a lot of good spots for them, but make sure you put those down and buy fairy stones. You can buy them from vendors. I have tons of gold in this game. I spend the vast majority of my gold on fairy stones. So then I don't have to run everywhere and I can get to where I want to go. So when I want to explore, I can. And when I don't want to explore, I can get where I need to go. And another thing that I'll suggest to you too, if you haven't seen it already, is we have a fully functioning interactive map for this game. And it might surprise you how many things are actually on this map. And it can actually drive you to explore. You don't have to use it all the time. And I'm not saying like have it open the whole time while you're playing. But if you want to like get an idea of like, oh man, where's that one thing that's in this area that I can't just seem to find, you can help find it real quick so you can eliminate some of that frustration. That's what we developed it for. So then you can go back to exploring and enjoying the game, you know, as you will. And the last thing I will say, which, you know, is probably unfortunate for people who, you know, rush the main storyline is don't go to endgame too early. A lot of people are making the mistake of writing the main quest line, getting to endgame too early, being like, this game's really short. I've heard people say to me, oh, I finished the game in 35 hours. I'm like, yeah, you finished the game, but you didn't really see much of the game. Um, so if you, you know, you made the mistake and went to end game, I suggest probably starting a new game and really taking your time. It's a game about taking your time. Don't be in a hurry. Get lost in the wilderness. Explore every possible location you can, and you will enjoy this game five times more. It is so good, the exploration. It's so rewarding. Never do you go anywhere in this game and find some place that you thought, you know, you should be exploring and you don't find anything. There's always loot. There's always a chest. There's always something to see, a monster or something to fight. And I think that, you know, a lot of people that are, are kind of harping on the game, you know, besides the obvious issues, really don't understand how much exploration there is. I am absolutely in love with this game. I, I played the first Dragon's Dogma. I enjoyed that one, but I am enjoying this one even more. I realize for a lot of people that it's very similar or it's kind of a little bit lighter version of Dragon's Dogma 1. The mechanics have been simplified a bit. It isn't quite as complex, but the exploration element, they still really nailed and that. It just is so much fun for me. But I'm curious from you guys, how are you guys finding the game? Have you been exploring a lot? Have you just been riding the quest lines? Did you go to Endgame too early? Let me know what you think in the comments below.